Hi everyone, your chess puzzler here and welcome, welcome to the channel. This uh, World Chess Championship in London is incredible in many ways. Whatever happens, it's going to be the closest of runs and as it stands and um, from what we have seen, it can go either way. Given that Carlsen has a better record than Farby, when it comes to their face-to-face -face encounters, this means very little. It is all about preparation and the ability to play the game and of course being able to surprise your opponent. There have been many moments where we thought someone was going to win at least one game, but it proved impossible. Every time the one attacked, the other one defended perfectly and the result is still hanging in the balance. Whatever happened in the first nine games happened. And we need to look ahead. We have reached that time where we know the first person who wins a game is most likely to win this match, so everything is at stake. So, who is it going to be in the end? Is Magnus going to retain the title, or is Fabi going to have his dreams come true? He's fighting like a lion, but Carlsen is not budging. Game 10 is about to get cracking, and we do have Fabi taking the white pieces, but does it matter who has what pieces? Gone are those days where white would start quite comfortably and gone are those days where white could hold to a draw. Today, with the proliferation of technology and chess engines, things have changed. Fabi has been very predictable with his opening choices and it is not expected that he's going to deviate from the lines he has prepared. And in the back of my head, that online clip always comes to mind. And this is what I'm talking about. Is it true or a hoax? And what are the theories behind it? Fabi is an E4 opener. But what if he goes for a D4 or even the red C? Possible? Very possible. But I have no problem either way. Let's hope we're going to see a rich game and let us hope we have a decisive result. The good thing about this is that we don't have to wait that long anymore. If it is not today, it will be very shortly. Someone has to win in the end and that time is fast approaching. Let us hope we're going to see this before we go into faster time controls. Okay, the game is starting as we speak. E4 is on the board. And again, we have the Sicilian. Do you think what I'm thinking? Another Rosolimo or another Sveshnikov? Knight f3, knight c6, and d4. And this has to be another Sveshnikov for sure. Takes, takes, knight f6, knight c3, e5, nothing new here. And we have another repetition of the earlier game. D6, knight, D5, takes, takes, knight back to base, A4. And this is again another replica. But let's see who deviates first and where. And this explains why the moves come in so fast. Bishop B7, same as before. Bishop B2, again the same. Castles, castles. Knight d7, and now we have a brand new Fabi response, b4. In his previous game, or shall we say game 8, does anyone remember what he did? This is what he did. Today Fabi tries this, and this is a surprising response, and I don't think anyone would have expected. What is a bit weird to see is that this b-pawn had never moved in game eight. And in fact, the game had finished with this guy being put on hold. What is he doing on b4? He doesn't stop a5 and he doesn't stop a6. Magnus went for f5 in game eight. And I'm more than sure he's looking at this move at some stage later on. But for now, Fabi is giving him the chance to attack his knight. And yes, instantly, this knight was attacked. Knight back to safety. And what do you think Magnus does? 
A5 and Navabi can consider a number of options. He knows the Black Knights can easily get on C5. And this was the idea of clearing the A file. So the Knight can increase his flexibility. So does he take? Does he get C3 out? Or does he get the Bishop involved? Okay, he took. And when the Rook recaptured, Knight C4 isn't expected. But Fabi's taking his time. Knight c4 is going to force the rook back, and white has it all covered for now. Sending some things have changed, but the main idea of the pelican is the same. Black is looking at f5, the knight can get active, the queen can get very active, and we are looking at a queen side development. Fabi may be looking to get his knight on b5, but what is going to happen when this knight finds his own way into this outpost? Okay, we didn't have to wait long, and this is now confirmed. Knight c4 got the rook to return to base, and now this bishop move, which is going to change the entire structure of the game now. f5, a move that was so much expected, and Fabi knows what he's up to. f4 is the only move that stops Carlsen from getting there first. But is Fabi going to go for this? He's hesitating. So most likely he's going to allow for to creep in. Okay. He goes for a5. And of course Carlsen takes his chances here. f4. And now the bishop has to drop back to. And most probably to d2. And move Fabi went for in his round 8 game. And he's really thinking right now where this bishop needs to go because we're looking at over five minutes and he hasn't made a move yet and this is a bit of a surprise response by Fabi which I completely overlooked the way forward is not to go back but fourth and this is where the bishop went what a brilliant way to establish some degree of dominance on b6 and it doesn't matter if you take the bishop or not but we do know if you take this bishop, once the knight lands on, <coughs> once the knight lands on this outpost, the rook is attacked, and the bishop on c8 is also attacked. So the knight on b6 is extremely strong, and what a spot to have him on. Carlson is taking his time, but it would be either take or get the queen out of there. If he doesn't want the knight on b6, he has to go for a queen move, and yep. This is what he decided to do. And this is going to be a very interesting development. With the queen site being locked down, Fabi comes up with this initiative. And this rook is now looking to get right into action. Is there a way to take advantage for black with this rook being here on a3? What if knight takes and when the knight is recaptured? Okay, there is rook a7 or... Rook b8, when the bishop comes off, what is the actual score? Things may look better for white. Queen b1, rook c7, and c4, and this game explodes. Magnus opts for a queen move, and this is such a danger move for white. There are multiple threats lurking in the background, but before black is able to build something concrete, he also has to be able to protect d6. Bishop c7 followed, keeping this queen hostage for the time being to be able to safeguard her little soldier. But if need be, rook f6 also covers nicely. But if you allow d6 to fall somehow, this would not look good for black. But how is this bishop going to come out of this spot he got himself into? He's for now safe, but I guess he can always return to b6 if need be. Was this the best move to go for? I leave this to your imagination for now. But it certainly got Carlsen in deep thinking mode. The world champ is using an incredible amount of time to make his next move. And boy, from what I see, Magnus has already spent, and here he comes, not 10, but nearly 15 minutes for a single move. And finally comes up with something. E4. You don't even need to be anywhere near advanced 
to see what is coming next. So Fabi's fall up move is an absolute no brainer. King to the very edge of the board to avoid that tsunami when F3 kicks in. And this is where the game is going to be stepped up by a few notches. Boom, B5, which took another 15 minutes of Carlsen's time. And from nowhere, it is Carlsen who might be in time trouble. He has just about half an hour left, but has another 20 moves, 20 more moves to reach time control. Fabi has more time, but he's on par. 43 minutes for 20 moves. Knight b6, knight takes, and bishop recaptures, and Carlsen is back in thinking mode. Let's hope his condition is not serious, and I shall be saying something about this in a short clip for those who want to hear more. Right now, this guy in b5 is threatened, but I have a very strong feeling Carlsen is going to attack the rook just to try and get him away from the third rank. Alternatively, there is bishop d7, and his problem solved. But I don't think this does much, but it is a possibility after all. There are not many moves around, you know. Rookie eight is an instant death and runs into this sneaky attack. But okay, we do have a move, and a fast one too. Queen g5. But... What is the idea here? Has Magnus decided to drop b5? Because this may not look good at all for him. I think this can be Fabi's break, in fact. But before we see what Fabi does, what is the queen doing on this spot on g5? Can anyone tell us what is going on? What does queen g5 do? Fabi has to rest this guy on b5, but does he worry about his king's safety? There are plenty of cults and pieces to instill some worry, and it's all about these two bishops and this rook on f8. He doesn't do much on f8, but he can't make it in a flush right into the game. So I guess Fabi is trying to work out the what if scenarios. And this is the very strange thing about Magnus. He can make a very bad move sometimes, and from there he finds all the best ones. And what this means is that he can get you off track as easily as this. I think everyone is expecting this guy in b5 to come flying off. But why is taking five with this long? And I have a very strong feeling he's not even going to take simply because he's hesitating. 18 minutes have passed and we're yet to see a move. And would you believe it guys cause we do have a move, and it's not bishop takes, but g3, and I think I'm hallucinating here. What the heck just happened? And I think we have another missed five opportunity here. Or is it something I have missed myself? There was plenty of talk of that h3 he went for in his earlier game, but I have a suspicion there is going to be more talk about this one, this g3. Do you expect the rook to be attacked? And this is exactly what Carlsen goes for. And this rook has to move out of the third rank unless Fabi prefers to place him on this spot. Okay, this is what we have. He could have taken first, but goes for a rook move to b3. And this is how you can mess up a pretty decent position and game. And this is where Carlsen is very good at. He turns a corner into an instant pro and this is what I'm talking about. Do we expect f3? We do, but Carlsen has another plan. He went right after the rook. And where is his rook to go now? Rook g1. And do we expect f3? And now the game gets as complicated as you can get. Okay, f3 is now confirmed. And you wonder why it takes as good as three minutes to pull out a move like this. Anyway, this is what we have on the board. And we are now looking at what Fabi has. Do you have to take on f3 or do you go for anything else? And what on earth do you go for here? It looks like we have a mate, but the rook would have to be surrendered. But let's consider what Fabi did. He got the bishop into f1, which was his only saviour. And moves are moving in seconds here. Carlsen took, Fabi recaptured. 
and you need to capture with the correct piece. And when this guy came off, so did this guy on B4. Queen back to E6, got this rook move in, and we're moving into blitz mode here. Bishop back to base, Queen E1, Bishop takes, Pawn takes, and Rook B8. Got the Queen to come in to support B6, but also stopping any further Pawn push. And we are now seven moves away from the players making time control. Fabi has eight minutes remaining, but Magnus only three, and now this time reduced to two, and is ticking very fast. Queen c4 going after the rook. Drop the rook back to this excellent post. And now do mind these passed pawns. And other moves do need to come in. And they do need to come in very fast. Fabi 6 and 37 seconds. But Carlsen has far less time than Fabi. Carlsen comes up with this move. Taking the queen does not look very good. But this Queen E2 move is giving Fabi a damn good run for his money. What on earth does he go for? Mr. Time is on neither player's side. And the players do need another four moves. Is this Rook move like something? Or is Rook AB1 better? Fabi went for this Rook move. And when the Queens came off, I don't think we're going to see a winner today. But this game is extremely exciting. With Carlsen to move, there is rook fb8 or even a straight d5 to cover. And with these two rooks and the position of the kings, don't get me wrong, no one is safe. Carlsen went for d5 and finally, finally gets out of his misery. h4, allowing now the king to escape. Carlsen is on his last minute and Fabi on his last three. Rook c8, rook a3, and there comes the king out, and it's all about reaching time controls so that the players can catch their breath. We have king h2, and the end game is well in progress. King e6, you really have to be very careful. Fabi stopped the king from getting into f5, and here Carlsen goes for this guy. It is either, sorry, no either. It has to be rook a6. And there is nothing else, or in fact rook b3, to give some added flexibility to the rook. But look at these passed pawns. So whatever happens, the white king needs to get heavily involved. But who's going to break through first? Okay, rook a6 is confirmed, and this game is on edge. And it's all about where these kings get to go. King d5, king g3, and now h6. Got h5 in. We can basically write off any reactivity and progress on the king side. So we need to be really looking at the queen side. And this is where all the action is going to take place. And do expect this black king to make the most out of the impact. And indeed, here he comes to wreck the day. King d4, and what a move this was. Rook b5 is the answer, and everything stands still. The king can't move south, of course, this guy drops, but this is one heck of an end game. Carlsen took over 18 and a half minutes for this king move, but with both players having made time control, let's see how they are going to burn up their time now. What does a rook check do here? It's going to force the king to go back from where he came from. But let's wait and see what Fabi has up his sleeve. We have a move. Fabi went for this rook move. And let's see what happens here. Probably king c4 and Fabi might have a problem. And there is some weird stuff unfolding. No king c3, no king move, but rook d6. And boy, we might have now Carlsen in trouble. And this trouble has now doubled. And by this I mean time-wise and position-wise. Having spent 15 minutes for this rock move, they cost in the game now, and this is the reason why Fabi really needs this rock check and does find it. And if now 
the king lands on the wrong side of the board, you are finished. Certainly a roller coaster game. And what a turnaround of events. The game is not finished yet, but let's see what happens at this very critical point. Carlson got the king out and east of the board. And when the rooks join forces, this has to be it. King back to e6 and Carlson knows it. C4 is a killer move and Fabi goes for it. Takes, takes, and Carlson is now desperate. Rook b6 is played, and now, OMG, this is as good as being tortured. Rook takes, check, king back to f7, and now another rook check, and Carlson is heavily injured. Rook f6, rook takes, check, and king takes, got this guy eliminated. It doesn't really matter how he's removed so far he is. And this is how Fabi took. King back to f7, got the king to move east. And out of nowhere, a draw was agreed. I don't understand, and I don't really want to understand, how on earth did this happen? Okay, another game out of the way, and just when you thought there was going to be a decisive result. Rigged? Or is there something in this position that I don't understand? Whatever it is, we'll find out in the press conference, but I cannot wait, and I will go on to publish this clip in the meantime. By the way, for all my American friends, a happy Thanksgiving to everyone and to anyone else who celebrates it. For sure, there had been moments in the game where Fabi had everything under control, and this is what it takes. One move. I think that G3 is going to be all over the news, but also this type of end game where Fabi could have pushed on for that win that he needs so badly. He didn't do it, so this is what we have. Tomorrow is a rest day, and we are back on Saturday to cover game 11 of 12. So until that time comes, this was your chess puzzler.